Hello. Um, today I want to talk about um, a little bit about the Magnificent Ambersons for its uh, 80th anniversary. Um, I know I talked about this some time ago. Um, I think last year or so, whenever I got the this Criterion version, but you know. Uh, a lot has been said about this, you know, I guess for the most part, I have sort of given my thoughts on it overall, what I think about the film. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the ending really is what a lot of people when watching this really are disappointed with, you know, because Orson Welles wasn't able to complete completed or well he completed it but in terms of like editing and such he had no real say because he was in South America making a documentary to help with uh, with you know um, the various uh, uh, communications and connections and all that good stuff with America and various South American countries. Uh, I believe Rio and spe uh, specifically. Um, but, you know. Yeah. But, you know, he went and... Down there, he was uh, making that when they were editing it. Got sent a work print of the film, and then he was to send... He was sending notes back, but... Unfortunately, he uh, was uh, left out of the uh, editing room, and after some test screenings, apparently a lot of people, you know, just disliked the film. Um, apparently. At least enough of a consensus to where they believed it was warranted to reshoot some stuff, especially... Um, the ending and um, like 45 minutes of this film uh, are gone and um, Orson Welles has often expressed his displeasure with the fact that not only was uh, he locked out of the editing room when he returned but also how they cut out 45 minutes of the film and then they just redid uh, the ending, which, in his words, basically the whole point of the film is to get to the ending. And um, without the ending being there, it's kind of like a who cares kind of like there's no point to the film. Like the like after major. Amberson passes away. That's what he says. Is that's really when you can tell it becomes a different film. It begins and starts and goes up to this point, and then from there, it it's just different. And I will say on on that hand, it is unfortunate. Um, but of what we have here, um. I think it's a, again, I think it's a fine film. It is disappointing. The footage is gone. You know, it seems to, uh, the consensus seems to be that it was destroyed. And, uh, you know, be that because it was just deliberately gotten rid of because of, you know, you know, that, 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 uh, those scenes they cut um, just, is just, you know, they they were so bad, they, you know, were just, they got rid of it all. Um, Peter Bogdanovich, a uh, very well-known, obviously, a filmmaker, passed away um, uh, this year, I believe. You know, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was at the beginning of this year. Because if it wasn't, it was, like, so close to the beginning of this year, um, 2022, that it, it was, like, at the tail end of 2012 but I'm pretty sure it was the, he passed away this year but you know he was a good friend and he documented 
a lot. Uh, uh, Orson Wills and talk to him and a lot of those things that he uh, talked to him about and things like you know about Orson Wells and the, the various films from Citizen Kane to Magnificent Ambersons and all the other uh, amazing films he did you know he, he would speak on his behalf especially you know when um, Pauline Kael uh, wrote her uh, piece about how he didn't uh, write anything in Citizen Kane and I've talked about that already uh, specifically with Mank, you know, the film Mank. And, um, but, you know, um, again, I think that the, you know, overall the performances, you know, Joseph Cotton, Dolores Castellano, Ann Baxter, Tim Holt, Agnes Moorhead, Ray Collins, uh, Erskine Sanford, and Richard Bennett all do an excellent job. Um, Orson Welles narrates the film. Uh, so, you know, you know, it's always cool to, that he was in it, you know, even though you never see him, which he said he purposely made this film so he didn't have to act in it. And um, in a way, he, he even in some videos I saw online, and that he kind of, you know, regrets it. You know, he regrets how he didn't sort of make himself a star. So I don't know if he would have, you know... Uh, played the lead of the film or not had he decided to basically put himself as a star because he said I should have probably put myself out there as a star you know you know he did Citizen Kane but then it's like you know I should have done that for a few more movies like for films at least and then or as well as also like plays he should have put himself in stuff more where he was like a, a leading man or or I guess at the, if anything at the very least a very strong supporting role so even if he wasn't the central lead he's playing such a important figure um, and again I don't want to just go and reiterate what I've said before but you know I do like the artwork of this uh, this can, of course it's quite amusing you know Stapleton X. Magnificent Ambersons. Screenplay production and direction by Orson Welles. Final. Scratch. Scratch that. Haven't looked at Yep, yeah, right. Jordan Mitchell. I'm wondering if he would have played George Minifer or if not. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting to think if Orson Welles did decide to make himself more of a star and not just like, be a director, important director and such. Which he is. I think he is a very important director. This edition of the film is excellent. Um, of course, I haven't gotten any other version of the film, though I had seen it before, and I thought it was fine, and also it's Orson Welles. Um, yeah. And again, the artwork here is excellent. And on the inside, it's just black, but then with the disc. Messing with the disc. Um, so, you know, even without the footage, unfortunately, and there are some stills that, you know, uh, Peter Bogdanovich has seen and that do exist from some of the stuff that was removed. You know, and part of the ending was, you know, Agnes Moorhead was going to be. Mental asylum, basically, and yeah, you know, it's just so much that was just leading up to the very end, and now without all that, it's kind of like you know, who cares? <laughs> I guess, basically, in the in the eyes of Orson Welles, you know, of course, he was like the 
the sea and it's all like sketched out by by Orson Welles. Screenplay production. Yeah, of course, this is based off of the book written by uh, Booth uh, Tarkington. Um, haven't read the book, so I can't say exactly for certainty exactly what the entire ending was was from the book at least because you never know i mean i'm sure you know he would have stuck as faithful as possible to the film or as to the book but of course maybe changing it up a bit here and there to make it cinematic that way it fits well and translates well to the screen uh but you know This is a fine film. Yeah. Again, disappointing that it's not like A Touch of Evil, which I have over there. I think I've mentioned that before. I don't believe I've talked about that film before. At least not in any major great length. You know, but... Um, I have... Yeah, I, I really... Uh, it is unfortunate that unlike... You know, this, you know, we have, you know, though, with Touch of Evil, we have, like, three versions. The original theatrical cut, uh, an international cut, I believe, and the restored version, which is basically as close to Orson Welles' vision as possible. You know, of course, he passed away by the time they got the reconstruction version of it made. And it's a shame that such a version does not exist of this, where, you know, you could have the... 88-minute uh, version that's on here and all the other versions and uh, that has been released on like DVD and Blu-ray as well as uh, this is over two hours obviously you know for, it's like 45 minutes was cut and they you know you know reshot some stuff for the ending to be different um so I don't know, you know, it says, it says here like over 40 minutes of footage, so like 45 or so. But, you know, it's unfortunate. Who knows, maybe the footage does exist somewhere. We've seen before how, like with Metropolis, uh, of a, a version of, you know, that as complete of a version that we have now, which I own from Kino Lorber, you know, that film was thought to could never be able to come close to a 153-minute version as possible. And yet we have a 148 version, which is as complete as you can get. And they just have inter, like, titles uh, spliced here and there to help fill in what you're missing. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the footage for this seems to be gone only still images exist uh, so that's unfortunate but who knows maybe one day we will see or hear that not all of the copies were destroyed um, so yeah I know this might not be all that uh, in depth or totally interesting to some people uh, this kind of video but I wanted to sort of celebrate just before the year is out um, a, a, another film that is quite notable in my opinion of Orson Welles uh, for its 80th anniversary excellent film for what it is you know again we don't have the complete version so of course that's unfortunate but this is better than none, I think. I, I'm glad that this does exist. And that... Um, even if Orson Welles is disappointed, at least his adaptation got shown to some extent. Um, this also has... Um, uh, uh, a segment from the 1925 silent... Uh, adaptation of the book which is 
cool. And um, 1978 uh, AFIS Symposium on Wells. Uh, audio interviews with Wells conducted by filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich. So yeah, two, uh, two Mercury Theater radio plays, 17 from 1938 adapted adaptation of another Booth Truckington novel by Wells and a Magnificent Ambersons radio uh, play, so that's cool, at least with this, I guess you'd be able to, you know, listen to this, and I don't, I don't think I've actually, oddly enough, I don't believe I've listened to the adaptation for whatever reason, I think I did 17, but it's been so long ago, anymore, when I, for whatever reason, I, with this film, after watching, I just kind of watched some of the essays and interviews or whatever regarding like the making of the film i don't too often go into the radio plays and you know that's it's pro you know no doubt that's um me and that's probably a my bad but you know it's pretty cool though that uh these exist so if anything you know i can at least just watch or i guess listen more specifically to the radio play and then be able to see where it all is better you know i know i'm probably a very unprepared for something like this and kind of went over the place but you know if orson wells was disappointed by this version and because rko kind of didn't really want him much anymore especially with how people apparently reacted to the film uh when they first saw it so and considering it you know how controversial um citizen kane became you know not really through any fault of his own but it was just sort of like it is what it is it's unfortunate um but yeah um fine film Wish we could have at least another cut of the film that exists to where uh, Orson Welles' version uh, was was there, and then people can watch that and see, you know, see the difference that that his version would make, and now you know just how better it is. Because I'm I'm sure it would be a be it would be better, you know. And I think this film is fine as is, but you know can only imagine just how better it would have been you know even with you know with the radio play of this that's on here and with the book um i'm sure cinematically you know the ending of and how it's been talked about you know it might look different from how we imagine it you know and so i would like to at least have been be able to see such a version of his ending but you know either it was deliberately destroyed or you know like a lot of what happened to many old films just wasn't handled properly and got destroyed by accident and so you know because of how film was very flammable way back when and i know by like the, the 30s and 40s and such they using different techniques in the 50s, you know, for film and, you know, in order to preserve them, but also to also not make them as flammable. And uh, today they've made sure to make it not be as flammable as uh, it used to be. Of course, a lot of things are digital now, but, you know, film does exist still. And um, I hope film will always exist. I think it's nice to have the option between film and uh yeah and digital it's nice to have those options at least um but yeah uh that's really all i have um i don't know how interesting this uh, uh video was but if it was of some interest if anything else maybe some people can discuss you know discuss it more and um, hopefully you know there's something to be said about it you know 
discuss more of this film. I think it's a very fascinating film at the very least, even if you're not fond of it. Um, <clears throat> there's something to this, I think. You know, and at the very least, the history of the making of it and how things were going well. But then in the editing, he was in South America making a documentary and wasn't here to oversee the editing. And when he did come back, he was basically like walked out of the editing room and reshoots happened and he had no involvement in any of that. Even with the narration, he just gave his the narration as, as he did at various intervals in the film so yeah this film got nominated for best picture and um, <clears throat> Agnes Moorhead um, was nominated for supporting actress it was also nominated for some other awards I don't believe it won any Academy Awards um, um, Joseph Cotton never got it acknowledged by the Academy ever, which I think is a shame. If anything else, he should have been nominated for supporting actor for Citizen Kane, but you know, he's just as great in here as he was in Kane, so but Joseph Cotton was just an excellent actor overall anyway. But um yeah. I uh hope all of you are doing well. Hope you found this video again to be interesting. Hope you had a great Christmas. I hope all of you are having a great rest of the year. I'll see you all next time, and just please take care. Bye.